This video is a review of the uh, EcoSmart 800 lumen LED light bulb. Uh, this one's coming from a company called Lighting Science. I think EcoSmart's a uh, house brand for the, the Home Depot. We're going to uh, take a look at this bulb, see how it performs, and we'll compare it against some of its peers, and then we'll tear it down and look at the engineering inside. Alright, the bulb's plugged into a, a kilowatt meter, which basically measures uh, watts. One of the big advantages of LED bulbs, of course, is they don't draw much power. Uh, this kilowatt's indicating it's uh, drawing about 13.7 watts, and the power factor uh, is almost unity, so that's good. Uh, the wattage rating, however, on the package it says 13 watts, and uh, this meter here is actually recording 13.6. Uh, uh, one would think one should round it up to 14. In terms of power and power factor correction, uh, the Cree bulb remains the uh, the best in this regard at 9.9 uh, .9 measured watts. Uh, the next best bulb, uh, it was a Philips bulb at 12.7 uh, watts. Now the bulb we're looking at today, uh, the Eco bulb is coming in at 13.7 uh, watts. Uh, and the switch bulb uh, is uh, the worst at 13.5 uh, watts. Okay, this is the flicker test. Um, some people are very sensitive to um, these light bulbs. They, uh, they can produce flicker if they don't have adequate uh, filtering capacitors on their output stage. A very simple setup to gauge how this bulb compares to other bulbs. Uh, obviously a solar cell here which generates uh, electricity proportional to the light that falls on it. Uh, the bulb, of course, in a socket that'll be fixed. Uh, basically I'll turn the bulb on. And then uh, on the oscilloscope here, uh, of course, it produces a waveform. It's usually around 120, uh, 120 hertz. And uh, measure the volts uh, peak to peak, and then do that for each subsequent bulb. And from that, uh, get a sense of how the uh, the flicker varies. Now, one thing that also happened here, I'll turn all the lights off, so there's only one light on uh, during the test. So uh, everything is nominalized. In terms of uh, flicker, uh, the voltage output from the solar cell in the Philips was the lowest, almost uh, no perceptible flicker. Uh, we'll just normalize the output of the uh, voltage uh, from the solar cell to be uh, to unity. Uh, the next best one was the Cree bulb here, uh, followed by the bulb we're looking at today, the EcoSmart, and then a uh, quite dramatic flicker coming out of the switch bulb. Uh, in this test, we'll uh, mate the light bulb with obviously a, a light dimmer. Uh, one problem with a lot of LED bulbs, they actually call it very special dimmers and uh, quite some complications there. And some bulbs which claim to be dimmable, quite frankly, not so good. So, uh, this is probably the cheapest dimmer one could find. I don't know how old it is. Uh, it certainly isn't uh, rated for any LED light bulbs. Uh, but since I'm sure a lot of customers don't really want to um, be replacing their dimmers when they buy a bulb, let's see how this one performs. This is actually really quite excellent. Um, a lot of LED light bulbs want to snap on at low voltages. Uh, but this one's got a really smooth motion to it, so the dimmability of this bulb uh, appears to be excellent. In this part of the video, we'll take a look at how light comes out of the bulb. Uh, the old traditional incandescent light bulb was pretty good. It was pretty consistent around uh, the radius of the bulb, basically the same amount of luminous flux. Now, LEDs, of course, are extremely directional and very small point sources, so one of the real challenges in optical engineering uh, is to produce a bulb that has light coming out uh, in, in a satisfying way. Now, on the first look of the bulb, it looks like it's perhaps more of a side emitter than it is a down emitter. So. Uh, one way of uh, finding that out is actually quite a, quite easy, a bit of amateur science. You can purchase a light meter for uh, well under $20 uh, and uh, run it around at a constant radius from the uh, the center of the bulb. Record the numbers on a polar graph and then you can draw a graph and you get a good sense pretty quickly actually how the light comes out of the bulb. So I'll do that. I'll, I'll get the line onto this uh, polar graph and uh, have a little discussion as to uh, what the bulb looks like. Okay, so here's the polar graph. The black, black line is the uh, the lux uh, along various angles. Lux, of course, being the lumens per square meter. Uh, and you can see sort of sort of the a bulge here and a bulge here, and it's a little bit less down here. And uh, of course, it drops off dramatically as you get to, towards the base here, where there's more metal than there is uh, light. So uh, again, right, this is uh, showing that this bulb is uh, well suited to say a, a desk lamp fixture, but um, uh, a fixture, we'll say, like for example, like this here, where it wants to point downwards mostly, uh, is is an area where this bulb isn't quite as strong as it would be, say, in a, in a traditional um, lamp. So uh, it's one of those things you have to just sort of pay attention to when you're buying LED bulbs. Uh, 
they're actually now becoming fixture specific. Right, let's um, let's uh, crack the bulb open and uh, see what's inside it. Before we do that, though, let's just externally uh, look at the shell here. It's polycarbonate, it's sort of a plastic uh, diffuser on the LEDs. Uh, a really large heatsink uh, on the product. Um, probably a retention ring that's used to uh, retain the electronics, and then of course the the A ball lace. Okay, so the top's obviously off the diffuser. Uh, it's not a side emitter, it's actually, uh, you can see the, all the LEDs are planar on this uh, aluminum-backed circuit board uh, pointing downwards. And this little top here is actually has a uh, little white light diffuser, which of course causes the light to be bounced, so it comes out the sides a little bit, and of course it does pass a bit through. Um, even this piece is actually fairly complicated, you can see that this little white disc uh, will not come out because we have two pieces of plastic which actually have been ultrasonically welded with this uh, in the top. So um, this is just a really good indication of how complicated the optics get in uh, these lamps. I'm trying to get these really, really bright point sources of light to uh, diffuse evenly uh, and attractively. Now, whilst we're looking down on the circuit board here, we can see there's uh, 11 LEDs. Um, and you can see these two little hand soldered wires are connections down to what will be the AC to DC converter somewhere in the base of the, the, the bulb. So uh, let's uh, take uh, this rivet off and uh, continue the teardown. So the bulb's now, of course, uh, in all of its constituent pieces. Light diffuser here, uh, the circuit board which contains the 11 LEDs here. Uh, clearly it's uh, stamped out of a sheet of metal. Uh, the casting looks like aluminum that has probably been powder coated. A little retention ring which holds the circuit board on. Of course, the AC to DC converter. Uh, this will take a much deeper look here in a second. The gray material is known as potting compound. It's poured around electronics and then sets into sort of a firm consistency. Um, it's got a couple of advantages. It allows heat to be sort of evenly uh, drawn away from the uh, surface electronics onto the uh, outer area. Uh, thermal gradients can really kill electronics reliability. Also provides a, a ability to create a very reliable assembly because you sort of lock everything in place. Uh, and then of course the uh, Edison A base. Okay, uh, an AC to DC converter circuit. Uh, all LED bulbs need this. Electric systems around the world are uh, hundreds of volts of AC and of course LEDs only need a couple volts of DC to work correctly. So yeah, all of these bulbs will have this kind of circuit board in them. What does vary though is the implementation of details. Uh, let's see, coming from on this side here, this uh, item here is a fuse, uh, for safety reasons of course. These two black uh, cylinders are inductors, and there's some capacitors here as well. These are forming a uh, EMI filter, what happens is you get a lot of uh, energy being generated by these circuits. And you don't want to push that back into the electric line, because then you can create all sorts of noise in electric lines and cause interference with other uh, communication systems. The uh, blue item here, of course, is uh, a DC smoothing capacitor. This is a switching regulator. We'll just flip it over here. I'm sure we'll find... Yeah, so we'll find a controller here. Uh, we'll find a full-wave rectifier here. This is a, a MOSFET, which is the switching transistor. The slot cut here is for isolation purposes. Uh, circuit boards have, although they're not in conductors, if you want to make really great isolation, you cut a hole in your circuit board. Um, it's good practice. It's, um, I think it's probably only halfway rectified on this slide, though. Um, this is what causes the, the flicker in a bulb. This filtering capacitor and filtering circuit isn't done uh, really well. You get a lot of AC components and uh, they're also flicker. Um, this is also one of the items that has a, a failure mechanism. Uh, Rubicon, uh, 50 volts, 330 microfarads, 130 volts. So um, an appropriate capacitor. For the application, uh, we can read, of course, indeed, from the confirmation it was designed by Lighting Sciences, uh, not a third party that you see sometimes with designs. Uh, the standard uh, placement fiducial, so the, the uh, circuit board can be picked in place by a machine. Let's see, here's the PCB Rev, Rev F. Let's see, it took six tries to get the circuit board right. What is interesting though is actually it's quite a large circuit board, um, and circuit board material is actually quite expensive. Uh, for example, the switch bulb, um, which unfortunately is in two pieces, uh, but I'll put it back together here. There's the switch board. Um, you, you can see how much smaller it is. Uh, that's interesting actually, circuit board material is sold on a per square inch basis, and you're probably looking at at least 
maybe five or six cents of circuit board material that you didn't need to spend, or at least you know, clearly like switch switchwood you can go buy more compact. Uh, even actually the most economically uh, challenged bulb that I, I tore down previously from GE, another really straightforward design uh, with not a lot of um, super clever engineering going on. Uh, it has a, uh, a circuit board which is actually smaller, so a little bit of surprise, fairly large circuit board uh, for the the bulbs I've torn down today. All right, well, that was fun. Uh, so that was the review, comparison, and uh, extreme teardown of an EcoSmart 800 lumen LED light bulb.